Welcome to the Teen Life Podcast, where we believe that teenagers are not a problem to be solved, but we are here to help you equip teenagers through the power of connection. Man, Chris, I almost got through that, but yes, I'm Carly Duke. I know I'm Carly (laughs) Duke, and I'm here ready to go with Chris Roby. Hey, guys. Now, Chris, this first topic is something I'm excited to talk about it because I just love kind people. They're some of my favorite people in the world. And Mm -hmm. this week is a week to celebrate that because it is World Kindness Week. Really? It is. I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. All these little holidays, aren't they so cute and fun? They really are. (laughs) And so close to Thanksgiving too, right? This has to be part of it, right? Surely you would think so. So Mm -hmm. World Kindness Week is November 7th through the 13th. Okay. But it is just this, like I said, I don't even know if a lot of people know about it, but it's an easy way to talk about kindness with your teenagers. It's an easy way to be kind yourself and to look for and celebrate kindness when you see it come out in our students. Well, it's funny because the the concept of kindness and maybe even the word might, I guess, for some sound even like kind of naive, you mm-hmm. know, or like little kid, you know, be yeah. kind, but it's not that. <laughs> um at all and 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 mainly because when you see it you know it and it's Mm -hmm. not a naive thing it's actually incredibly powerful uh to to be around someone who genuinely is kind uh kindness is not weakness uh kindness uh, is very powerful and can change someone's life and so that's why it's really important we're talking about this yeah i think i love what you said it can change your life which sounds like an exaggeration but it's really not Mm -hmm. even something really small can make a really big difference. And I think we found that working for teen life of even writing a nice note for someone, then what they come back for of, I can't believe you did that. Thank you so much. That means so much. Like something small can make someone's day, which could Mm -hmm. turn around their week, which could, I mean, make a difference, especially for a teenager and the choices that they make later in that week because of what one person did for them. Well, and I think it's also, it shows it's tough, it's tough out there, um, mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Um, um, this world that we're living in is, conti- it's, is increasingly disconnected and difficult and complex and people aren't always the, the nicest as we interact, especially online. And so, um, this is a even more potent tool, um, to lean into, um, in our day to day. Yeah. I also think kindness is important to talk about, especially for the podcast, because you know we Mm. love to talk about connection. And acts of kindness or just being kind is a great way to connect with others. And so we kind of want to talk about some ways to do that, either with your teen, to do that to teenagers, or to encourage your teen to be more kind. So some ways to celebrate World Kindness Week Number one, probably the easiest, just say something kind. Hmm. I mean, like, 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 like what? It, it could be simple, like giving someone a compliment, like hmm. to think to yourself today, I'm going to give five compliments to people and make sure they're real. <laughs> Don't just <laughs> like be like, go about it. But if you like someone's hair that day, tell them about it. If they did a really good job in your class, tell them about it. Um, even something like telling someone you're thinking of them could hmm. be a kind thing to do. And that could be a phone call or a text of, Hey, I'm thinking about you today. You just really mean a lot to me or, Hey, you just bring a lot of joy to my life. And I wanted to let you know. And then I think another thing is just saying hi to strangers could be really simple at the grocery store. If someone's checking you out, look them in the eye and tell them, thank you. Ask them how their day is hold a door open for someone and actually say hello to them. Mm-hmm. I'll say the um, telling someone when you're thinking of them is actually a really, um, it's a really high impact, easy way to connect with someone. And mm. there have been times, not as much right now, but there's been times in my, in my life where I've, I've felt like I've had that capacity where, you know, I, if I think of someone I'm not thought about in a while, I've got their number, (laughs) you know, and just a quick, Hey, um, I was thinking about, you know, that experience we had and just check and make sure you're doing okay. Or what, I mean, just something small. Um, even if it's not a compliment Mm -hmm. or even if it's not, it's just very, just a quick check-in, um, 
our lives are so scattered. And I think just a quick check in, how are you doing is an act of kindness. Um, or, you know, I miss you or whatever that is. That's just, it's a very easy thing to do that literally takes 30 seconds and you're on with your day. You probably won't think about it again Mm -hmm. until they respond. Right. And so it's just, it's very, very small, very, very, um, low, low friction kind of ways to show kindness. Mm -hmm. When I think if, think about if someone did that for you, what that would mean, Mm -hmm. that you're being thought of, that you haven't been forgotten. And especially Mm -hmm. if we can do that for teenagers, I think that is huge. So Carly, one thing I'll I'll say about that. So, and when we, uh, in our curriculum, when we do teen life support groups, Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I talk about a lot is how do you feel closer to someone? Mm -hmm. And we've probably talked about this some on the podcast in the past. So I I apologize if I'm repeating myself. I just, I think it's this important. Yeah. Um, we depend on the other person so much, um, or perceive that's their role to play to feel close to someone. And it really isn't. Um, what we find is when we, when we do the reaching out, we actually feel closer to someone, Hmm. um, no matter sometimes how they respond to it is because in some way you've taken control of that. You've taken some responsibility, some agency for how you, how close you feel to someone. And so if you're feeling far away from someone, sometimes that is the thing that we do. Mm-hmm. Is we don't wait on them, we take we take the action, and you you send the text, you make the phone call, you drop the note, whatever that is, and nine times out of ten, they feel closer to that person just because they took that action. Yeah, I love that. So some other small ways are just like random acts of kindness, which mm-hmm. I feel like we hear this thrown around a lot, but it can be so so fun. So. It could be something as easy as just like holding the door open, hmm. um, encouraging students like, hey, why don't you hold the door open for the class today or hold in the morning? It could be something easy like that. I know that some people give a lot of beef for this, but maybe in the drive through line, buy coffee for someone behind you. Or if you're at a restaurant and could tell someone is sad or stressed or be like, hey, can I buy your meal today just on me? It's my treat. Hmm. You could hide a ten dollar bill in someone's shopping cart. Um, these are expensive. Um, ten dollars? <laughs> I don't know, ma'am. <laughs> um, Chris doesn't carry. To, Chris doesn't carry cash around. Apparently, I'm about to say, yeah, that's that, that's a that's a rare instance. I'll have a ten dollar bill hanging around. Um, but drop off a baked good for a neighbor. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know during uh, during COVID, my family. Um, we had, a, it sounds really, it's a weird sentence, but we had an, an abundance of bacon in our house. <laughs> um, my father-in-law makes his own homemade bacon, so we had all this bacon. So we just started every Sunday, we would we would ship off a, a, a big thing of bacon to people every Sunday morning. And mm-hmm. it was just a, it was, it was a way we can kind of get out of ourselves in a hard time. And, um, but just something that, you know, maybe something you love, you share with someone else. Yeah. Like that. Well, I think too, and this could be easy, especially for teenagers and teenage boys, but if you have a neighbor who their grass is getting a little too long, or maybe they're a little older and having a hard time, just when you're mowing your yard, go ahead and mow theirs too. Mm -hmm. Like little things like that, that don't have to, you're right. Some of these you could spend some money on, and some of these could just be an act of giving your time. But that's also an act of kindness. I think also being open to kindness in some ways is a, is a, and I have a very specific example of this that we didn't realize that, it was, it made an impact, but we have neighbors who are, um, a very different culture than us, um, even eat differently, very, very vegetarian, very natural. And they invited us into their home as part of kind of some, some ritual ceremonial things they were doing as they, as they moved in. Um, and they shared some of their food with us, which was not, it was pretty atypical kind of food for mm-hmm. the Ruby family. <laughs> but we encourage each other to just be open to it. Let's not turn our nose up to it. Yeah. And I think that made a big impact on them, um, even though it was, like I said, very different. But we learned a lot. And um, I think being open to others, kindness, and generosity actually is in and of itself an act of kindness. Mm-hmm. The last kind of section category to celebrate World Kindness Week is to donate. Hmm. And obviously you can donate money, but what I'm more thinking of here is like, look through what you already have. 
gently used Mm. items and you can give that to charities. It could be books, it could be clothes, it could be furniture that you're wanting to get rid of. And that's an easy way to just say like, you know what? I have a lot. I think it was in, I can't remember if I've mentioned this on the podcast, Chris, in August, I can't remember if we did every day or not, but I had a push for our family of every day we're going to get rid of two things. Hmm. They can be small or big, but pick two things. It can be clothes. It can be shoes, two things that you don't want. I did that with the kids and toys and we're going to go donate them. Oh, cool. And so yeah, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't mention that. I like that. Yeah. So it can be something easy like that. Do it for a week. It doesn't have to be a whole month, but say like, Hey, this week, every day we're going to pick two things. And it was Mm -hmm. fun because my kids, even though they're little, they loved it. They got into like, this would be great for a kid who doesn't have a toy. And some things I was like, no, don't give that away. (laughs) (laughs) We like that here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it's just really cool to watch your kids be generous. Um, And then also you could do a clothing or a food drive take it to a food bank. As it gets colder, homeless shelters need socks and coats and blankets, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that's another way you can give. I think also just as a family, even as a friend group, um, donate your time by volunteering. Um, this is the time of year where those um, opportunities are more abundant or at yeah. least more evident in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Um, and so really, um, doing this together. Cause I think one of the cool things about kindness is it's not, it's powerful on its own, but exponentially powerful together. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, showing kindness as a family or a friend group or, you know, just a team or something like that, where we're going to do this together, uh, can really be a powerful, uh, a powerful tool. For the trend this week, Chris, I'll be honest. This is a subject that I had to do some research on because I'm not super familiar with it, but I want to talk about anime and manga. Well, with your extensive knowledge, I know less about this. (laughs) I was going to (laughs) say, what do you know, Chris? (laughs) I'm here to learn, Carly. I love it. So let's start with some definitions. Okay. Anime is hand-drawn or computer-generated animation originating from Japan. Okay. So animation being movies, TV shows. Manga are the comics or graphic novels originating from Japan. Now, they usually go hand in hand because I feel like most anime is produced based off of a manga series. So kind of think of like our comic book world, like Marvel. The movies are based off of comics. That's kind of how these go hand in hand. But there could also be anime that's not based off manga. And I'm sure there are lots of manga series that do not have a TV show that goes along with it. It makes sense, though, that this is, you know, it starts as a comic and goes to a, the screen, which majority of the time, that's what you see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just think this is, I feel like you're seeing it more because it's more readily ac- accessible, even on things like Netflix. Um, but I've had students in my teen life groups before drawing anime characters or they'll talk about when we talk about what's your favorite show they bring up stuff i'm like i've never heard of that before i'm gonna have to go do more research and so i think that this is a big deal with some teenagers so it's worth talking about and there are probably titles that people have heard of that they didn't even put together that that was anime Hmm. so things like pokemon is anime Um, Sailor Moon was a big TV show when I was like a teenager elementary school. And I don't think until I was like doing research and looking up that I was like, oh, I didn't even like put together that that would have been anime. Um, Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. Surely you've at least heard of that one, Chris. Yeah, I've heard of that one. That that one's a big player in my circles. Mm -hmm. That, That was a big part of certain kids childhood, but I I didn't know it was anime either until we were putting this together. Yeah. And then when my brothers were younger, Avatar, not like the blue Avatar, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) it was called Mm -hmm. Avatar, the last airbender, which I feel like they just, they did a movie more recently about that, I think, but it used to be a cartoon series that Mm -hmm. he's like a bald boy, Mm -hmm. but that was big. And that's also anime, but I didn't necessarily list like current ones because I feel like they're always changing. But I mean, lots and lots of people watch anime and read manga. 
But one thing I did want to point out is that both of these forms of entertainment range from like kid-friendly narratives to more violently or sexually explicit material. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes parents might assume because they're illustrations or they're cartoons and they seem childish and cutesy that they're appropriate for all kids. And that's not necessarily the case. No, I think just cartoons in general aren't always safe anymore. Um, And being, being mindful, that's really important. Mm Mm-hmm. One thing I did when I was kind of looking into this that I thought was interesting is for the most part, especially Japanese manga, they market to audience and to gender Hmm. and then by genre. So they actually have like a, I don't know if you'd call it a rating, but they market them to young boys and young girls separately. Mm -hmm. But that's also different from more adult men and adult women. So that's something to look for. I'm not going to be able to probably say these words right, but shonen is young boys and then shoujo is young girls. So that could be something to look for if your kid has manga. Um, Look up, it will be in the corner on the cover probably, but look up, are they reading things that are appropriate for them? Because ultimately as a parent, that's kind of up to you to decide what's appropriate. Mm Mm-hmm. But as always, we are going to encourage you to do research. If your child is watching anime or reading something, look it up. Ask questions. Hey, what are you watching? What's it about? Tell me more about it. And then do your own research to kind of figure out because you don't want to be surprised if your student happened to get into a series that maybe you don't want them reading or watching. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also going to put a link to the New York Public Library in the show notes, and they list some age-appropriate manga titles. If you are curious and your student is interested, um, they go by like younger students and at least through middle school. And so Mm -hmm. that could be a good resource for you. But as always, like I said, ask questions, do your own research, but your library might be a great resource too to go and ask like, hey, what would be appropriate for my 13-year-old? And they would probably have some answers for you. Now, finally, for the tip this week, Chris, I want to talk about horseshoes. Okay. <laughs> like the game? Well, no. Like the, the shape? Is a horseshoe okay. a shape? I think you can say that because if, 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 I, if you say horseshoes, I can picture a shape of a horseshoe. Sure. I mean, it wouldn't be like a traditional shape, like a square. Or, yeah. It's not a mathematical shape. Okay, there you go. That's a yeah. great way to put that, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. So I saw this Instagram post that talked about how to be inclusive, which kind of goes along with this idea of kindness. And it really talked about how we want our kids to look out for other people. And this idea that she used is like a circle is very closed off. So if you're part of a circle, there's not really room for anyone else because... Hmm it's closed. But if we can get our kids to think in terms of horseshoes, then there's always room for one more. Hmm. And so I just really love this idea of in this post and I'll link it and I'm, I'm about to read a excerpt of it, but this idea that like she walked into a place and felt, it also goes, I guess, along with last week when we talked about social awkwardness, but walked into a place and didn't feel comfortable. And how she felt uncomfortable, but that that also made her think, next time I need to make sure that I'm looking out for the person who feels uncomfortable. Hmm. And so, hang on, let me get to the one I wanted to read. I should have had this up already. Okay, so she talks about it's teaching our kids to do the same, to help them be kind to people to help them be the kind of people who turn circles into horseshoes, the kind of teens who almost always have room for one more, the kind of kids who are different in the best possible way. There are millions of valid excuses we can use to justify why we don't reach out. We are too shy, too busy, too different, too tired, too content, or too weighed down by our own mess. But can we just put away the excuses and figure out how we can embrace just one more? Hmm. I love that quote. Yeah, I know. I know. I know a lot of, you know, 
groups try to, you know, think about the empty chair, you know, Mm -hmm. or the, the extra place at that table of trying to kind of keep that open. You know, there's always room for more there. And and it's, it's, it's more of that abundance mindset, right. And not a scarcity, um, that, that there's always room at this table. There's always room, um, for those. I I wrote about that this week uh, about that idea that we, um, the more inclusive inclusive environments that we are willing to create, um, I mean, the better off we are, but also just the more people feel included. And that starts with us. Um, mm-hmm. As we started this conversation about kindness today, um, I love that idea of the horseshoe versus the circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I encourage you as we go into this kindness week, Think about how you can make horseshoes and then also ways that you can talk to your teenager to encourage them to look outside of themselves this week and to draw someone else in and be that person who reaches out to someone else. And with that, it's a wrap on this episode. So we want to encourage you to subscribe. That's a really easy way to make sure that you don't ever miss our content. Follow us on social media. You can now also watch us on YouTube and you can find those links. Love that for us. Mm -hmm. But we also encourage you to review us in your favorite podcast app and definitely share us with a friend, someone who could use this for themselves or for their teens, or if you just know that they love teenagers like you. And with that, we'll see you next week. Mm